Hello everybody, this is Ellis Paul. I'm here in Crozet, Virginia. If you're just tuning in, which even I am, you're watching Ellis Paul's Traveling Medicine Show. This is a live stream show that happens every Friday night when I'm not on, not on the road myself. And I sit and we do thematic songs. Tonight's songs are about faith. And I bring in a special guest to sing some songs with me and hang out a bit. And tonight I'm really happy to say, because this is a guy that I've loved for a long time. He's kind of like a brother to me in the scene. His name is Mark Orelli. He's going to be with us as a special guest. Uh, but in the meantime, we get about five minutes before the show starts. Uh, grab a beverage. And set yourself up. Share this on your Facebook feeds. Do all those things that you need to do to spread the word. It's going to be a great one tonight. I think uh, Mark is one of the best songwriters in the country for Americana, roots, folk music, singer-songwriter stuff, and um, so happy to have him on the show. While we wait, I'm going to be uh, playing a song of mine called Holy. Some of you know this already. Let me see if I can make this. Ah, there it is. Speaking of songs about faith, this song's called Holy. It's on the Patreon album. you got to be over on Patreon to get this song. Jacqueline McClare has been on his roof all night, staring at the lights of this town. The last train in town has just Good to see you, Michael. Congrats. Happy birthday. The snow he, hears the sound. he says it's holy. The sound of its holy. Thanks, Felina. Thank you for that. To me. His mother says, Christ, a complete. Don't waste your prayers on change. Let me know where you're from, y'all. We're going to start in about five minutes. He says, what's Glad you to have you here. Jamie is in Connecticut. Roosters are crowing. Church bells have spoken. I agree. Glad you're there's here. a steam train stretching down the tracks. Facebook user. And there's Declan McClane. Nice to have you. Running beside a friend. New York, New York in the house. Takes a home, ain't looking back. He says it's a home. The sound of it's a home. And Karen is here from Santa Fe, Mexico. Instead of just out of Pittsburgh. Nice and to have you here, honey. I hope you're having a good time. I can take it to die. Tim is in Philly, I Ohio. Can across the sea. David Sardina. Good to have you here, brother. From Six String Concerts down in Cary. Place I've played she a few times. It's wonderful. Then you, thanks for tuning in. Me. Gail Smith Nickerson, Manchester, me. Maine. Karen from New Jersey. Nice to see you. Ah, the watercolor. Those were the days. Good night, Felina. We'll see you next time. Cheers. John Malloy. It's April at the Queenstown docks. There's a foghorn calling across the way. And there's Declan McLaren with a third class ticket on the biggest ship that man's ever made. He says it's holy, the sound of it's holy, holy to me. And if only I could take it to New York, pay his way for me. Just in case. His friends I don't exactly have a plan tonight me. like I wish I did, but... For those of you tuning in, this is my tip jar and stuff, but Mark's got a big fundraiser, so keep that in mind. Amy Hoffman is here. Good evening to you as well.
and get this party started. All right, folks, I'll be back in 30 seconds. Cheers. <laughs> This is Ellis Paul. Let me get this comment off the page there. Thanks, Amy. Listen, we're just starting the show. If you would please just hit that share button out onto your feed, that would be great. We want to get as many people out here tonight as possible. It's an important show, I think, because we're bringing in um, one of the country's finest songwriters, and he's in the midst of a campaign to raise money for his album project. He's got a lot going on in his personal life on top of that. And he's a dear friend, and I want to just show general support. And you guys have been super gracious in supporting all the folks that I have had on the show for uh, the last couple of years, which has uh, been fantastic. So another night, another great night, and here we are. Tonight's special guest is a guy named Mark Orelli. I met Mark when he was uh, at Bates College back in the early 90s. I guess maybe 94. We'll have to talk about Tonight's show is this. It's Ellis Paul's Traveling Medicine Show. It is Friday, March 25th. And we are here on Facebook Live. And we are on four different platforms of Facebook and Twitch and Twitter and YouTube and uh, actually five Facebook channels tonight. And our theme tonight is faith. And our special guest is Mr. Mark Arelli. He's going to come on in just a bit. But in the meantime, do share this and uh, let's get the word out. We've got a lot of friends from all over the country here. Lini and David from Hollywood, Florida, who uh, are also fans of Mark. Tanya Binder from New Hampshire. And Debbie Newman over there in California. So tonight, at Songs of Faith, this is the most hopeful song I believe ever written. You've heard me do it maybe before. It was the number one song of the 20th century, as named by the National Endowment of the Arts and the Radio Industry Academy of America. That's where you'll find Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up 
where the clouds are far behind Where troubles smell like lemon drops Way above the chimney tops That's where you'll find If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why, oh, why can't I? Can't I? That song's from the 1939 movie, and Tom Harris jumped the gun here with us. Let's put him on here. Great Yip Harburg and Harold Arlen song, yeah. And uh, I heard, was it, I, I think Yip, Yip might have done the, the lyrics. Can't remember the, the who did what. But how can you argue, right? It's got to be one of the best songs, absolutely. Tonight, if you're just joining us once again, I've got the great Mark Orelli coming on board here for a couple songs uh, at the 8.30 hour. Please share this on your Facebook page if, if you haven't by that by this point. We got folks here from New Hampshire. We got folks here from Oklahoma, out in California, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, and Christian. I think you live in Maryland, don't you, Christian? I'm starting to get to know the regulars of this show. Uh, by heart, which is um, an amazing, an amazing thing. Hey, here's a song that was uh, popular uh, way back in the day. I think I'm going to try it. Let's see here. Uh, I have to bring it on screen. This is a song about, uh, it's, it's called From a Distance, and it was written by Julie Gold back in 1985. And she somehow got it into Nancy Griffith's hands, and Nancy Griffith had a kind of a minor hit with it in Europe and Ireland uh, and then it was finally passed on to Bette Midler who did this beautiful version of it and it went to number one on the adult contemporary charts uh, in I think 1990 and uh, number two on the Billboard Hot 100 it, it's it, listen it's it's a song that's beloved especially in my world because it's it's written by folks that are important to us Julie Gold and of course Nancy Griffith and and, and you, how can you not love Bette Midler uh, but it was also ranked as number uh, 37 on VH1's uh, 50 of the most awesomely bad songs ever written. And um, it doesn't deserve that, especially especially now. Um, but I wanted to tell you that. I wanted to tell you that story because art is in the eye of the beholder. And a lot of people think this is hokey. But in light of the fact that we're knocking on the door of World War III here, uh, I couldn't think of a better song to sing tonight when it was uh, a song about faith. So this is a song called From a Distance. And hey, look at this. Mr. Edward A. Sanchez is here. Already shared. Thank you, brother, for that. Let's try this thing, see how we do. I haven't actually rehearsed it much because I had one crazy day today, but all right, where is it? There it is. From a distance, the world looks blue and green, and the snow-capped mountains white. From a distance, 
The ocean meets the stream And the eagle takes to flight From a distance there is harmony And it echoes through the land It's the voice of hope It's the voice of peace it's the voice of every man from a distance we all have had enough and no one is in need from a distance there are no guns no bombs no From a distance, we are instruments marching in a common band, playing songs of hope, playing songs of peace. They're the songs of every man. God is watching us. God is watching us, God is watching us from a distance, from a distance, you look like my friend, even though we are at war, from a distance, I just can't comprehend. From a distance, there is harmony, and it echoes through the land. It's the hope of hopes, it's the love of loves, it's the heart of every It's a song of every man. God is watching us. God is watching us. God is watching us from a distance. All right. I believe that song was done by Cliff Richards as well, and there was a time on the Irish charts where uh, it was on the top 20 in three different spots by three, it might have even been four artists. Maybe Julie Gold's version got out there as well. But it's a special song despite the flack that it took for being um, overly sincere, but I think sincerity is is in, uh, in much need right now. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. If you're just tuning in, next week I'm going to be on the road. I'm going to be uh, in Timonium, Maryland, uh, playing the Uptown Concerts, I think it's called. Um, you can go to my website for all the tour dates, of course. Uh, I'm looking forward to being on the road. I've got three or four shows uh, in April lined up. And a bunch of stuff in March, July, June, all of those things are very, very busy. I just want to remind you of a couple of things for those just joining us. I, I'm doing a summer vacation trip, leading a summer vacation along the coast of Maine and then out to Monhegan Island, Maine, with two friends of mine, Vance Gilbert and uh, Molly Venter. And we're going to be here at this beautiful place, Monhegan Island Light. That's the view at the top of the hill of this place. It's so beautiful, I did a drawing of it. Uh, if you can, consider going. I'm, I'll put the banner up here for you to take a look at it. It's, uh, where are you? Where are you? I'm already talking with an Irish accent, and it's not a very good one. Roots on the Rails. Go to rootsontherails.com. Vance and I and Molly are going to be playing every night uh, in the round, and we're going to be doing a couple of shows on the coast of Maine in venues as well, 
open the public, but then we all go out to the island and uh, it's a grand adventure. This is the fourth time doing it, leading this trip, and I absolutely love, love, love it. So please consider joining us there. It's going to be June 12th to the 18th. Great food, great music, shipwrecks, lighthouses, and lobster. Lots of fun. Let me see. I'm going to do something sort of off the beaten theme here. Mark Corelli is going to be with us coming up. Uh, if you're just joining us, thank you for coming aboard. You're watching Alice Paul's Traveling Medicine Show. It's a weekly live stream show from uh, Crozet, Virginia. Take me to a driving movie Put your body right next to me Whisper promises to me Roll the windows down Cause when you look at me like that Kiss me, I'll kiss you right back Break your heart, give it to me Take me to a drive Doesn't matter where we go. Take me, take me. I don't even have to know. Take me, take me slow. Take me on a long vacation. I'll bound from an old. Watch the world go by to close our eyes in a sleeping car. We'll wake up in a brand new place. You're the only one who knows my face. Looking for a little salvation. Take me on a long vacation. Take me. Take me. Doesn't matter where we go. Take me, take me. I don't even have to know. Take me, take me slow. Mm -hmm. Take me on a roller coaster. I want to feel my heart turn. Till I'm upside down, can't touch the ground, there's no gravity. I want to feel my heart rise, just like the first time we touched. Want to fall over and over and over, take me on a roller coaster. Take me, take me.
right, that striving movie, y'all. You're listening to the Travel and Medicine Show. Mark Corelli's going to be with us in just a few minutes. I want to thank all these folks who are uh, so kind here watching in. Charlene says that song is truly a favorite of mine. Uh, Tracy says, I just figured out how to cast this to my TV. It sounds good. Isn't that a victory? When you're, you're sitting there and you got your phone and you're trying to do the airdrop thing and or whatever they call it. Maybe that's why it never works for me. Um, we got Nancy here, probably in New York somewhere. Uh, folks from all over. Oh, she's there in the Bronx. Oh, this is sounding wonderful. Last time I heard Mark was at the Uptown Coffee House in the Bronx. Beautiful place to play. Been there many times. Uh, and Nancy says, nice to be on East Coast time. She's back on the East Coast time. I'm glad to hear that, too. So I want to try this, and um, I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to do it anyway. I didn't get, I had a little bit of a crazy uh, tech day today, but I think we're going to try it anyway. This is uh, an REM song. This is a show about faith, if you're just tuning in. And I'm going to have to scroll uh, as, as I go. This is from 1991's album, Out of Time, which sold 10 million copies, mainly because of this incredible song. Any song that uses a mandolin and can be a pop song, there's not, 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 not a lot out there that you can mention. I think uh, Sean Colvin had one. Um, somebody knows the title of that song. I can't recall it off the top of my head. A Sunny Came Home has a beautiful mandolin.
thought that I heard you laughing I thought that I heard you sing I think I thought I saw you try Oh, that was just a dream That was just a dream That was just a dream All right, well, that's losing my religion. At least we got a song about faith in there as well. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Back uh, years and years ago, I met our special guest, Mark Orelli. He was actually the student uh, that booked me at Bates College, or the host of the show. And uh, I went and played there because uh, I was living in Maine. It was an easy uh, you know, hour drive from where I lived in Maine. And, and uh, it was a fantastic time. And afterwards, uh, I think we might have gone back to his dorm room with a couple friends and just we sat around and he picked my brain and he had this desire to be a musician. And, um, and I guess he had a few other folks come through like John Gorka and uh, Greg Brown. And, and uh, so he was just in a perfect position to get impacted by musicians who are songwriters and coming through and he's he's ended up being I think one of the best songwriters in the country in this music form so it's it's a pleasure to have him on I'm just going to make sure Mark that I have uh, these earplugs uh, correctly set up before I bring you in um, let's see here you want to go to settings and audio make sure it's looking good um, of course there they are So everybody, this is Mr. Mark Arelli. Please uh, applaud at home, as you will. Hey, brother. Hey, how are you? I'm doing all right. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Did you like the way I butchered that R.E.M. song? <laughs> it's very bold. I was, I was very impressed. You, you I, got from point A to point B, and nobody got hurt. <laughs> uh, just my pride. I, I was looking... <laughs> I had downloaded it and then moved it over. And when I was when I started the song, I'm like, "Oh my God!" All of the chords were in the wrong positions over the wrong words. <laughs> Have they ever done? That? Oh God! <laughs> so I'm like having to read the chord at the end of the sentence for a word that was over here. It was. Um, oh, that was yeah. impressive. Then that was truly it, impressive. It's improv theater. I just I do my best. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm so, I'm so happy to have you on board here and uh because you you've got this huge album fundraiser that is just going through the roof and um we want everybody to uh contribute to that tonight who are watching i'm just going to put this banner up there uh so people can see it you, oh, look at pretty, that. isn't that beautiful like you're pretty wow. deep into the um the album stuff now so uh, this is like what your 10th record i mean how many how many of you where Dude, are you at in the numbers? This will be my, I believe, my 15th record. <laughs> nice. It's crazy. So in that batch, because I do this too, I think I've got yep. 22 if I count them all. Are you counting wow. stuff that you did in college or post-college? or? How there you, was, uh, there was one. There's one in uh, post-college uh, full length. My, I start from the first full length record. And actually, I think if I do that, it might be 16. I can't remember. <laughs> I, I got to I gotta really study this up. It's not It's not cool to not know. <laughs> it's it's a lot of records. And you, you've, have you done a live record? Uh, not an official, like, physical product. I put out a few downloads um, of live shows over the years. But I've never done a live record, so... You know, I still have that to go to in my back pocket someday. <laughs> so tell me about this record. I know you've recorded a lot uh, in, in this. This is your kind of music space at your place there. And you're living in Massachusetts, are you? Where, where yeah, you yeah. I live in Melrose, just outside of Boston, um, uh, in the Burbs, really. Uh, two towns from where the, the suburb where I grew up. And um, yeah, I'm down in my in my basement uh, office slash studio. This is this uh, I don't know how many square feet it, it is. It's not very many, um, but this is where I recorded the new record, and uh, 
and it's where I spend a significant portion of my time. It's it's wonderful because the property kind of slopes down from the main um, the main road, which is over here. So uh, half the room is totally underground. And even though we're on the route to the hospital and there's sirens going by all day, it's really quiet down here. So. Um, oh, that's great. But there's no windows, so it's a trade-off. <laughs> now I see that drum kit. Are you banging away on drums as well in there? Is there? Oh is yeah, there, yeah. That just, that's you. No, no, that's me. Um, yeah, I, I love I love doing all that stuff. You know, in You're fact, like, when it comes time to sing, I'm like, okay, I guess I got to sing now. You know? <laughs> You're like Stevie Wonder, the master of all trades. <laughs> I'm doing my best, man. Yeah. I, I'm tempted to do a more recording uh, right here at my place as well, but you're, you're a spectacular musician, and I think anything thrown in your hands is going to sound musical. I bet you could, you could get a beautiful note out of a tuba if you wanted it. Um, oh, I you. remember one night that I wanted to bring up with you. Um, I was uh -oh. playing Raoul's in, in oh. Portland, Maine, and you, you know this story because I saw that you shared it on your yep. Facebook page, but you were in the audience that night, and I don't know, maybe you were 23, 24 at the time. Maybe. But you were there with your parents at the show. Maybe they, maybe you didn't have your license. <laughs> and they, were <laughs> they were driving you, but I, I got cornered by your parents out in the, in the uh, parking lot. Can you tell me, like, your end yeah. of that story? I was mortified. My parents, you know, I didn't, the only, there's only one person in my family that's an artist, and that's my, that's my aunt, Maureen, who's a wonderful painter. Um, but, you know, it just wasn't a recognized career path. It took me, I spent a lot of time convincing them that I wanted to be a biologist and that that was okay instead of a doctor and a lawyer. But then, you know, once I finished college, I was like, I gotta, I gotta try this music thing, man. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna regret it if I don't. So that really sent them over the deep end, you know, for a while at least. They're my biggest fans now. But um, at the time, they just were like, how are you going to afford health insurance? How are you going to get health insurance? And so that was, as I recall, what they cornered you in the Browell's parking lot. Like, you, sir, Ellis Paul, how do, you're a good musician, but how do you, how do you pay for health insurance? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh, I, I just had that conversation with my parents myself. Let me show you. And I just pull out the, uh, yeah. the script yeah. and, and, and read it off. Uh, <laughs> We're still things. having that conversation as a oh, country. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm wondering how I'm paying for it right now, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, listen, I'm going to leave you for a couple songs. We'll come back and talk. I'll see you in two songs. Everybody, this All is right. Mr. Mark Arelli. All right, we're doing songs uh, you know, loosely themed around faith tonight. So anyone that's uh, ever seen their kid up at, the, at home plate trying to get a hit in a Little League game uh, knows a little bit about faith. So this is called The Hitter. Even though it's been forever Some things bring me right back The feel of oil leather The smell of fresh cut grass A perfect sun is shining On a perfect Saturday that's my kid out on the diamond Getting ready to play He's been working hard all season Just trying to get a piece The obsession's only deepened It's all he eats and breathes and sleeps Most nights when I get home He's waiting out in our backyard and he begs me, Daddy, just a one more pitch, even though it's getting dark. Life's a little like a baseball game. It ain't the score, it's how you're playing. You win some, you lose some, that's a fact. No matter where you go or what you do, I'll always be proud of you. Whenever you strike out, I got your back But you'll never forget the sound of the ball Off that bat Now we've talked about the butterflies That he gets when he's on deck Now he's staring in the pitcher's eyes And I'm praying he connects 
He might foul a pitch into the stands before his time is up. To me, he looks just like a hitter who could use a little luck. Life's a little like a baseball game. It ain't the score, it's how you're playing. You win some, you lose some, that's a fact. No matter where you go or what you do, I'll always be proud of you. Whenever you strike out, I got your back. But you'll never forget the sound of the ball off that bat. Two down, the bottom of the fifth, and a runner on second base. I slapped his back and bumped his fist as he walked up to the plate. Then I held my breath, the pitcher threw, and it all seemed so unreal to see a ball so white in the sky, so blue. On its way to center field, Life's a little like a baseball game. It ain't the score, it's how you're playing. You win some, you lose some, that's a fact. No matter where you go or what you do, I'll always be proud of you. Whenever you strike out, I got your back. But you'll never forget the sound of the ball. Off that bat, and I'll never forget the sound of the ball. Off that bat. I'm seeing all these comments here, but I can't. Re I'm I'm not a pro like Paul is. I can't I can't read and and play at the same time. So, um, I'm gonna look at them later though. Uh, so when he asked me to come up with a theme for this show, I I chose I chose faith, but I wanted to look at it from, um, you know, not not necessarily from a religious standpoint. Of course, everyone knows about that kind of faith, but. Um, and certainly, you know, you, you heard in that last song, the faith of, you know, when your kid's up there at bat, please let him get a hit. Um, there's also a special kind of faith that, that uh, comes uh, at certain times of the year in New England, especially like late October, early November, when things start to get really bleak. And that's where this one comes from. It's called Everything in Ruin. truck stuck in the mud down in the valley where the low fields flood every spring when the river jumps its banks and a few summer leaves clinging to the bow by the wing on wheel the whole deal's gone south only one's left got no place else to go everything in ruin now Chilling night, 
Save one lone cricket fiddling for his life Sawing off a shivery waltz before the frost It's all gone to seed, brown and spent And I'm wondering where all the innocence went Will it come back like a red-winged blackbird song? Everything in ruin now, ruin now, ruin now Everything in ruin now, still to be Card of my sleeve just in case Old man winter calls my bluff Oh, it smells like snow The sky is earth black Full moon cloudy as a cataract But all I gotta do is make it through These next few months Thanks. Man, you are, you're so good, Mark. Thanks really. so Well, I'm standing up. I had to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, you could probably do that lying down, I'm guessing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I want to get the uh, the elephant out of the room really quickly here. Sure. Because I, I, I know that the talk of the folk world right now is um, a really difficult diagnosis you got about your health and... Um, you know, you, you were quite open about it in, in the text regarding your fundraiser and the complications that this diagnosis brings to uh, your future and, and, and the expenses that come along with it if you want to continue a life as a touring musician. And um, So can you spill the beans? I hate to put you on the spot, yeah, yeah. but, uh, you know. No, absolutely. I, I, um, I think people want to hear what's going on with you and, and how you're feeling. Sure. Yeah, so in the fall of 2020, um, I was diagnosed with a retinal, a degenerative retinal disease called retinitis pigmentosa, and um, it's uh, it's not a super common thing, but um, it starts with the loss of peripheral and night vision, uh, and that's kind of where I am now. Mostly night vision uh, is is tricky for me. And then it progresses to uh, legal blindness, and, and in some cases, you know, even further than that. Um, so, you know, it was a it was a challenging diagnosis, and and as I called, you know, close friends up to kind of tell people, I I would say like, yeah, I'm you know calling with not really great news, you know, I got got kind of a really unfortunate diagnosis and everyone would freak out you know it took me a while to talk about it like no no it's not it's nothing fatal um it's not great but it's not fatal it's and it's something that i can i can learn to live with but it, it is a challenge because um you know m most of uh of my life uh, you know as you know better than any is is spent traveling around uh the world a lot of times just me and my guitar and that is not really a possibility anymore. Um, I, I can no longer drive at night uh, safely. Uh, so I've just stopped. Yeah, and I think so, of all those post-midnight drives when you, you've loaded up the car and then you, yeah. you've got another hour to the, the next hotel and you can't do that. 
you're, no, you're, st- you're stuck. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's been a real it's been it's been hard, uh, and it's of course you know anytime you go through something like this, your whole family goes through something like this. So you know, um, for ex- you know when the kids are out at some place and they need to be picked up at night. You know, oftentimes I can't do that, so my wife has to do that. It's just, it's, it's very, it's hard. Uh, it's a lot more work um, uh, on something that was already a lot of work. Just trying to figure out how to like raise two kids and and uh, and you know be a a, t- a traveling t- touring musician. Um, so you know, we we were all isolated, right? In this in these past couple of years, and I I felt kind of doubly isolated because of this. And I kind of, you know, like what happens in the wake of bad news, um, I freaked out. You know, I thought like, oh my God, this is it. You know, catastrophic thinking, like I'm not going to be able to do my job anymore. I'm not going to be able to drive to studios and make records and do gigs. And it was dark uh, for a while, a long time, actually. And um, what I end, what ended up kind of saving me, or at least starting to kind of, you know, help uh, take the edge off, was coming down here in my studio, and I was just like, I have to figure out how to express myself creatively down here alone. If I can't go anywhere, if I can't see anyone, if I can't get anywhere, I need to be able to just work with what I have here, and um, I just didn't want to lose my creative agency too, you know, Um, because in many ways, that's all we have, you know, the reception of the music, you know, all that stuff, that's out of your hands, really, it's just about how you want to create, and what you can do, uh, you know, by yourself, and so I started, you know, playing drums down here, you know, layering things one at a time, and um, the first few songs were were pretty, um, they weren't bad, they were just stilted, you know, it didn't really sound like music to me, and um, and I'll never forget it. The first time I, I I worked on a song, and played it back, you know, at the end when I felt like I'd gotten in a good spot, and I was like, this sounds like music. Like I'm not thinking about how I made it. I'm thinking about how the song makes me feel. You know, I'm feeling something. I'm not even thinking. I'm feeling. Yeah. And that was like, okay, we can do this. You know. And so I just started recording mainly just to make myself feel better and then after a while i was like this this could be a record and and now it is a re- <laughs> now it is a record <laughs> that's great it, you know the beatles obviously you know abandoned the idea of live touring i know i know you're not going to do this but no no i, I no. mean it, if it comes to complete like isolation you, you're a great songwriter you have all the equipment you need to make the rest of us happy and you could do it right there in that room. You'll have to expand it if we want to visit. <laughs> However, there's not, a, <laughs> there's not a lot of room for an audience down there. And No, uh, there really isn't. There's barely enough room for me. But um, yeah, I, you know, the, I'm still, I'm far, as I've said before, I'm far too stubborn to let, to let this stop me. But it does, it does change a lot about how I approach things. And things that were challenging before become even more challenging. And um well, Mark, it, it means that you're going to have to tour with someone, right? I mean, you can't. Yeah. Our our life is all about for folks that don't know our our life. It, it it's like it's black and bright. It's black and bright. It's just shadow, and bright lights. And if you don't have somebody to guide you through all of that, and that's not only just driving at night, but it's getting from backstage to on stage and and moving through a club where it's nothing but, but like who, what, where the shadows come and go yeah. and they're passing in. in are you, are you going to need someone to be there with you? Is that the reality of this? And yeah, for sure. I mean, right now I'm just trying to get people to help drive. Uh, sometimes guys in the band, I'll throw them a little extra money and, and they'll they'll drive. But that, it, it, it wears everybody down. Everyone, all the artists are just exhausted right now. So what I really need is someone that can just, that's their job, to, to drive and maybe do some other kind of little tour managing things. Um, I'm really just still learning how to relearning how to do my job. I, every time I go out, I learn something new about what I need to, to function safely. It's very situational, you know, I mean, that's, that's, I guess the one thing that I really like to put out there is that, you know, 
at least certain disabilities a lot a lot more than we might realize are are very contextual and um, very situational it's not a binary thing it's not like you're you're disabled and you can't do anything or you're you know perfectly you know fine and can do everything um, in in daylight with my glasses on I have 2020 vision you know I've, I've never seen better in some respects um, but if I were behind the wheel and I were to go like through the tunnels in Boston it's a problem uh, or if I even go down a tree-lined street on a on a on a sunny day and it's and it's really you know shady I get a little you know nervous that you know God forbid someone come out in front of me so um, yeah. and then you know 80% of my job is done in conditions that I, I can't see well in at all and, and it will only be getting worse and at some point um, so yeah it's it's uh, it's an adjustment to, to, to be sure but I wouldn't have said anything about any of any of this but it started creeping into the songs you know I would have just kind of this would have been just like for me it's personal it's nobody's business um, but it started creeping into the songs in kind of subtle and, and not so subtle ways. And, and then I just realized that, you know, burdens, like if you just spread it out over a lot of people, everyone can carry just a little bit and yeah. you feel lighter. And I, I do feel a lot better af after having told people, you know, it was, it was hard to kind of keep it to myself, but I just didn't know how to talk about it yet. Well, I volunteer for uh, any time you want to go out on the road and shoot ah. some shows. I'll, oh, I will be your be great. I will be your uh, your your guide dog. And, uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, that and would be we'll amazing. Do that. Let's let's do that. All right. That I'm going to leave fantastic. you for a couple more songs here, and we'll circle back. All right. Cheers. Okay. Sure. Let's um. Uh, let's do. I'm going to do some songs from the new record. And I want to do them in tune, though. Yeah, let's see here. All right, that's good. Um, I think this is going to be the first track on the, on the record. It's called Breaking the Clouds. Troubled minds can last forever. Troubled times just got to give. If we're to survive, it'll be together alone. Ain't no way to live. I'm going to wait for a break in the clouds For the sun to come shining down Oh, it's hard to keep the faith But we're bound for brighter days So I'm going to wait for a break in the cloud I got a friend Lives out in Oregon Wish I could see him again Lately I've been thinking about what's important and I'm headed west just as soon as I can I'm gonna wait for a break in the clouds for the sun to come shining down oh it's hard to Break in the clouds 
It's a fade out on the record, but we I don't have the live fade out on the on the on the live stream perfected yet. So um, thanks for listening, everybody. It's really, really wonderful to be with you here tonight. Um, I wanted to do the title track of uh, of the record. It's called Lay Your Darkness Down and um, and it came, uh, it stemmed from a conversation I had with um, the wonderful songwriter and, and producer, uh, Joe Henry. And um, we were talking about exploring, uh, you know, kind of the, the dark stuff uh, in, in your art. And he said, you know, that he considered it his job to go there because, you know, the, the darkness shows you where the, where, the, uh, where the light is coming from. And I thought... Oh my God, that's a great line. <laughs> so uh, I kind of did an exploration of that uh, on on this one here, and uh, and it's also a little bit about you know choosing not to carry something around, uh, at least all not all the time. You can you can lay it down every once in a while, and and everything will be okay. So uh, this is called "Lay Your Darkness Down." <laughs> Last night a storm blew through our town The power went out, the rain poured down And for an hour or so, the wind blew fast and mean I walked around after the flood Piles of trash and pools of mud But up above, the prettiest sunset that I've seen I woke up to the news Fate ain't something you can choose And them Harlem River blues is all too real I couldn't even cry I was sad but not surprised That muddy water was always lapping at your heels so rest easy, brother, and travel light. You had your mama's eyes, but you were your father's son. Lay your darkness down. Shadows lie upon the ground to show us where the light is coming from.
towns can be rebuilt but some holes just can't be filled and hope is in the heart of the beholder so i'll remember you i guess at your kindest at your best and pray you shed the weight upon your shoulder so rest easy brother and trample light you had your mama's eyes but you were your father's son lay your darkness down shadows lie upon the ground to show us where the light is coming from Lay your darkness down The shadows lie upon the ground To show us where the light is coming from Beautiful. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you so much. I love, you know, the fact that I can't see a lot of my friends. It's it's so nice to be able to visit, at least online, and hang out and hear people sing. Uh, I got to say this. This show has absolutely saved my life in the last I'm two sure. years. I'm sure, man. It's an yeah. amazing thing that you're doing here. I don't... I, I don't, it's such a learning curve. I don't, I'm not sure people truly understand, you know, not just the technical, technical aspects of it, but to, to make it all feel natural and personable and, you know, the way that you do, that is a, that's a tough thing and, and you make it look easy, truly. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Hey, I want to just mention just a couple of things. Your, your song by degrees was mentioned, uh, uh nominated, I should say for, uh, Song of the Year at the Americana Music Awards. I mean, mm. the. I know you're not going to play that song tonight, but it's an incredible song. If you guys get a chance to hear it, it's one of my favorite Mark songs. Um, it's just nice to see you get the attention that you deserve, Mark. I I, I got to say, oh. it's like, uh, it's a <laughs> Thanks, it's man. a good. I feel like it's your time right now, and um, that the country is going to really pick up on this record and and. Uh, not only on your story, sometimes, unfortunately, the story that you, ha you tell about yourself is more important than the music when you're trying to sell a record. Uh, yeah. But you've got a great story, and I, I don't even have to worry about the songs. I know they're, they're, they're going to be <laughs> as good as songs can actually be. So um, oh, thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens here in the next year for you, and uh, I'm really, really absolutely thrilled for you. Um, not about the... <laughs> the eye issue, yeah. which yeah. is tough. And I was, I was telling folks, because I'm in the echo of it, like you dropped the bomb two years ago on yourself, yeah. uh, and I'm just, I just heard it a few weeks ago. So for me, it's fresh news, and I'm like devastated, and you're standing there like you're taking a walk in the, in, in the park in a way with, <laughs> with it all, because you've had to tell, it, tell the same story to a million people. But for me, I'm like completely like right on the edge of falling apart listening to you, so... Oh it's, man, uh, that means so much. I, yeah, I, I feel um, I feel very supported and I feel very loved. And um, you know, if if this is the thing that you know turns a, a few more uh, ears, you know, towards my music, like uh, so be it. You know that that's fine. Um, there's there's plenty of other stuff before this. You know that I that I oh, can. Yeah. Uh, you know that's waiting there f for people but um that's the wonderful just, thing whatever pulls yeah. people in there's like this whole like pool to swim in of songs of your back yeah catalog. you know i think someone said to me relatively early on i can't remember who it was but like you're gonna spend a lot of time 
getting people to try and pay attention to what you're doing and you you know it's hard but you damn sure better have something to say once they pay attention once they come (laughs) you know had this happened at 25 before you had like record after record after record yeah before you had 15 records of filled with great songs uh you know the story would be old yeah and i didn't know i didn't know that that music could could kind of save you in a way then you know it wasn't it wasn't necessarily that i took it for granted it was just it was all just so new you know and i knew it meant yeah. a lot to me but i didn't i'd never really experienced any kind of uh tragedy uh in my life so i didn't i didn't know the the role that music the full dynamic spectrum <laughs> of the role that that music can play in your life and yeah it really can uh, it really can save you and and uh, it's it's saving me, you know, right now. Yeah, I think you're in a. First of all, you're in a music form where the the audience is probably like a, absolutely on the most highest level of giving, empathetic, mm. caring. Unless you're a Nazi, <laughs> you're pretty you're pretty much guaranteed to be loved if they care about your 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 music, and uh, so it's it. And it's happened to me many times, and I've had medical issues, but not none as severe as yours. Where and and my crowd is, and they're here tonight that they've come through, and uh, and I know your audience, my audience, and the general folk audience is just absolutely incredibly, super empathetic, and they want to take care of uh, the people that are doing this music. It's because it's important to them, and and uh, you're doing it better than everybody else in my mind it just i really do believe that thanks man all right let's let's get one more song from you absolutely yeah this well this has just been a a joy and um i wanted i wanted to finish up with uh i wanted to finish up with a song that um was a was a big song for me and then um these guys, uh, Vance Gilbert and Nellis Paul, covered it, <laughs> and uh, that was that was quite a moment for me. That was um, one of the first times that uh, that two songwriters and artists that I'd respected uh, that I couldn't really respect more picked and that wrote so many have written so many great songs of their own picked up one of mine and um, and took it for a joyride, and it was uh, it was a really wonderful thing. Uh, to see it's the highest compliment that another artist, you know, one artist can pay a, a songwriter. Um, um, so I wanted to end with that one tonight. It is it is very much about uh, about hope. So um, this is called The Only Way. And thanks so much for listening, everybody. I read the paper and I watch the news Seems there's only pain and suffering and there ain't nothing I can do And it's so senseless, I feel defenseless, so small I could shut my windows, I could bolt my door But if I don't feel safe enough to speak my mind anymore Then what's the use? I'm nothing left to lose, no further to fall So I'm gonna love And I'm gonna believe I'm gonna dream But I'm gonna roll up my sleeves and give everything until there's nothing left to give. That's the only way that I know how to live. And it was a nightmare, no tongue could tell. The streets in New York City look like the gates of hell. In a flash, the smoke and the ass they came pouring down like rain but they circled wagons 
they gathered round as they bravely pulled our brothers and our sisters from the ground and i know that we owe them more than to be afraid so i'm gonna love and i'm gonna believe i'm gonna dream but i'm gonna roll up my sleeves and give everything until there's nothing left to give that's the only way i know how comes of war I know freedom has a price but it doesn't keep score and it's too much to swallow it's left me hollow after all this time all of this time but I won't tell you what to believe that I'm too young to be so cynical and too old to be naive every action well it breeds a reaction so let this be mine so i'm gonna love and i'm gonna believe i'm gonna dream but i'm gonna roll up my sleeves and give everything until there's nothing left to that's the only way I know how to live Oh, well, I'm gonna love And I'm gonna believe And I'm gonna dream But I'm gonna roll up my, roll up my sleeves Until there's nothing left to give That's the only way that I know how to live Oh, that's the only way that I Hey, you know one thing I love about that song? If you you put any crisis center in the verses, the chorus, <laughs> the chorus can work for any almost anything. You know, <laughs> from save the whales to Ukraine, it's just uh, uh, yeah, it's just the perfect the perfect uh, chorus for empathy and you know. What, I guess it's I a folk song, say, man. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, Laurie loves you. Laurie is. Uh, and for those of you that don't know Laurie, she's she's my partner. And she absolutely loves your music, and which is great because I I came in loving your music. It would suck if I didn't because then I'd have to be like, really, do we have to listen to another Marcarelli? <laughs> but fortunately, like I I already came in convinced, so I didn't need I didn't need the push. But um, my previous partner also loved your music, and she's oh. the reason she's the reason why I I chose to cover that song. Oh, said, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Because I hadn't heard it and she had. I don't know how. She oh, said, you, you, cool. have to cover the, you have to cover this song. I just heard it on the radio. It's like the best song I've ever heard. Oh. And one, one thing about you, um, and I, you know, I think, you know, we're, we all have a mission statement as folk singers about writing about what's happening around us. But some folk singers get there first. You know what I mean? And sometimes I yeah. need like... I need time before the the bigness of it hits me in a small way where I can, you know, find the nugget in it mm -hmm. to find it. But that song, um, 
just encapsulated how we all should feel about 9-11 and, yeah. and anything, was immediate. really. Yeah, really, that was immediate. That's yeah. shocking to me because you you really fucking nailed it. Yeah, it's they're not always immediate, and you know the um, it's fun to go back and now and revisit some of these, you know, more topical songs and see how they hold up if they hold up because, um, frankly, the last by degrees being a, a notable exception, um, the last however many years, it's it, I've found it harder to write those kinds of songs, and I've I, things have kind of really shrunken down to. Um, you know, for for lack of a better expression, like what's right right in front of my eyes, because <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons, you know. So I've just been really kind of working on a smaller scale, um, uh, a more human scale, I think, uh, or individual scale more recently. So it's fun to go back to some of those songs with that. You know, I really like. I wanted them to be anthems. They seem to want to be anthems. Than you know, the songs did and. Uh, it's it's really go, great to go back and play them again. So thanks for giving me the chance. Yeah, well, right where where from wherever you are, that's I think that's the it's because it's bound to be profound and affect all of us and how we view the world. So, everybody, this is Mark Corelli. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. It, it's been one of the best nights I think we've ever had here. Oh so man, I, thank you. I appreciate you being on. Cheers, brother. I'm so we'll glad I could be here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Paul. Yeah, we'll, we'll circle back. Cheers. All right. That's Mark Arelli, y'all, and uh, if, if um, I don't know, if you're not moved by what happened tonight, you're made of stone, <laughs> and you need therapy, and some kind of brain transplant, and heart transplant. Just amazing music, and uh, from one of my favorite writers, and uh, one of my favorite, uh, my, my girlfriend's favorite writers, and one of my ex-wife's favorite writers, and uh, next time I'm going to get involved with a Vance Gilbert fan if that happens I'm going to keep the one I have Larry's amazing but it's Marcarelli Marcarelli Marcar <laughs> uh, it's a good thing I love him all right cheers y'all I'm going to do one more song and we're going to bounce uh, what a night I feel like uh, you know the mission statement of, of this uh, show was never put on greater display than tonight So let's play this uh, uh, David Glazer song to see if I I won't burst into flames. Uh, David Glazer was a friend of mine uh, who, like Mark, knew he had a uh, pretty serious condition. And, of course, he didn't drop it on me until he was quite comfortable with dropping it, which is his prerogative. Um, Concrete River to say goodnight. Hey, listen, and thank you for the love in my tip jar tonight. I'm going to keep marks up. We want to be able to get Mark a somebody on the road who can uh, travel with him, drive for him, walk him on stage, sit him down in front of a microphone, or, and get him into his position so that he can play for us. And some who walk on stage and take him off stage because that's what he needs or he's going to crash in some way. And that's why the fundraiser is so necessary.
It's the rule that lies between us And many are the days since you've been gone May the angel on your shore Guide you safely through I wonder where you are tonight I wonder if you're happy I'll say my little prayer Send it out across the miles I hope you're in a special place With people there that love you And I hope you'll make it back to them Before too long between us and many are the days since you've been gone may the angel on your shoulder guide you safely through the night and may the concrete river What a night. I think I shed 20 pounds of tears, guys, off camera tonight. And uh, I'm going to go, like, st <laughs> stick my face in a vat of ice cream. <laughs> and lovely to sit with you guys tonight. And uh, we'll see you not next week, next Friday. I'm, I'll probably run some kind of uh, rerun show. Um, next Friday, and please tune in if you if you like. It'll be one of the the gatherings, maybe like the Halloween show. Uh, so that'll be next Friday, and then after that, uh, the following Friday in April, I'm going to have Lynn Miles, the godmother of the Canadian folk scene, and uh, and a voice like she's sort of the equivalent of Mark's, just kind of honey toned, super insightful, like pull the car over kind of voice. Um, and again, uh, Laurie loves her. I love her. She's probably one of the funniest people I've ever met. And um, <laughs> in a dark way, she's just very, very, very funny. She's going to be a great interview, and I can't wait to hang out with her. That's in two weeks. Um, love you guys. Just want to say thank you for the tips in my tip jar. If I, I, I wanted to make sure I mentioned the folks that, that contributed to my life here as well. Um, but sending love out to you guys. I'm going to get off the air before I burst into flames.